Hey guys, it's Ruri and today we're in Kerbal Space Program again and in this video we're actually going to try out the new Leostar A1 I believe it is, which is actually a space shuttle type craft in the stock version of Kerbal Space Program in the stock game. So it's actually included, you don't even have to build anything to get it. Now I did make a couple of very slight changes, I increased the thrust limiter on the shuttle engines, um, slightly I think up from 35-ish which is the default all the way up to maybe 50 or 50 or 60 and uh, just to help balance it out a little bit because I felt it was a little bit unbalanced um, and that seems to have helped a lot because I did fly this thing a few times just to get kind of get the hang of it get a feel for the type of turn it likes to do and uh, the other change I made was I rotated it so actually when we pitch over we pitch over on our back and go to 90 degrees and we don't have to do like a spin like the shuttle actually has to do um, before that, just to make things a little bit easier um, because it's not the easiest thing to fly as most shuttles aren't. So you pretty much go straight up till, till you get to about six kilometers in this thing and uh, even um, and then sorry the uh, boosters will split off. But you get um, it's actually beneficial with this craft from what I've seen at least to go a little bit higher than you normally would um, just because the thrust to weight ratio can get kind of low when when you start to reduce the thrust on that uh, main engine so to keep the thrust balanced between the uh, shuttle and the fuel tank um, so to when you decrease the thrust to weight ratio that much you almost you need to you need to have gone up enough before you need to start worrying about the turn so that you've got that vertical speed behind you so you don't have to worry about falling back down um, so that, that helps a lot. So you can see I'm turning really quite late at the moment. This was maybe a little bit later than you'd ideally want to do it. You'd maybe want to be at the, where I am now a couple of kilometers earlier. Um, but that's that's fine, it still works absolutely fine. Um, and I did actually do some in-depth testing on ascent profiles a while ago. And I found that actually, while they made a small amount of difference, as long as it's kind of get up to around 10 kilometers and start to pitch over, uh, as long as you do that kind of thing, or maybe even if it's like 8 kilometers, or even if you leave it till 15 kilometers, you're going to be within 10, 20, 30, 40 meters a second of delta V difference. And there isn't a perfect one for every that will work the best for every craft, so it, it depends on a lot of factors. So in all honesty, it's not worth worrying about the ascent profile too much, unless it's something like an SSTO where they're obviously a lot more important because you need to squeeze as much as you can from those uh, those valuable uh, jet engines. So this craft actually does have a jet engine at the back. Um, it's, it's only a basic jet engine, um, but that is just for when you land, basically, because unlike the real space shuttle where you can calculate where you're going to land in Kerbal Space Program with the stock craft, you can't really expect every player to be able to do that, um, or at least to be able to judge it well enough to glide down. Um, although I nearly did actually judge it well enough, which was pretty good considering this, that was the first time I actually tried to land um, next to the KSC. Anyway, so we're going pretty much horizontally now, and that is one of the other really important things about flying this craft, is that you get up a lot of horizontal speed before you separate this tank. You want to be pretty much in orbit before you separate this tank, because the only reserves left after you separate this tank are the ones for the jet engine and the ones for the monopropellant engines which it has four of in the next stage which is pretty damn good really um, so it provides enough thrust actually with four of those to move this thing around enough to finish off getting into an orbit and to deorbit fairly easily and it, it can also carry a lot of cargo this thing as well so that's the next thing I'd like to talk about is the new parts that are in this uh, version of the game, the ones from the Space Plane Plus mod. As you can see, or you will see especially in a bit, the plane actually looks really, really nice. Uh, it's, you know, really, really sleek looking. Um, it doesn't maybe fly the best, but that's just because the wings are so far back, I think. But yeah, those new parts are awesome in comparison to the old ones. And uh, the addition of those cargo bays could make this ship very, very good. So you can see we're pretty much in an orbit as I was saying and we've still got quite a bit of fuel left in that main tank so that kind of leads me to believe that this thing could carry a reasonable amount of cargo which would be quite awesome to see. Um, so that's something that I will 
probably try at some point in the future. But this was just a kind of test flight to make sure. Um, you know, it can consistently get into orbit and it's not too difficult to do. And to kind of show you guys as well what you can do with it. So now it has come time to split away from that main tank because we're not going to take it all the way into orbit. We want to let it deorbit on its own. Now you'll see if I'm, I'm right clicking on there's a monopropellant tank in there and that monopropellant tank can hold 300 units of monopropellant so it's quite a substantial amount um, and that tank uh, is actually closed by default to stop you from using your deorbit fuel before you you know need to so you don't uh, end up stranded just as a little safety measure really so you don't end up using it because obviously could would be automatically used by the RCS as well which I didn't actually have to use much of on the Ascent. If you, you kind of get used to controlling it, it's not too bad. So after uh, letting the engines, the RCS engines, use that fuel, um, I powered them up and uh, set them off already. There we go. That was letting them. That was me just uh, toggling that little checkbox that lets you allow fuel to be used from the tank. And there you go. You can see... Um, fairly quickly really considering it's monopropellant engines it's increasing uh, the periapsis up now I went into a bit of a weird orbit here I'll admit but that was just because um, I wasn't looking at the map too much when I started it and I wanted to see how much I could really get out of that main fuel tank so I built up as much horizontal speed as I could anyway there we go and um, you can see moved around a little bit in the orbit now and uh, yeah everything's going to plan, it made it into orbit quite successfully. I did actually do an EVA as well, test out the cargo bay doors, let Jeb sit inside the cargo bay, that kind of thing, but it wasn't really worth looking at, so I took it out of the final footage. But um, yeah, it works fine, it would be quite a you know, really useful crew and cargo shuttle, and it does, even though it's maybe not perfect, it does give a really good idea of what kind of things we'll be able to do with these new parts. So. Maybe uh, maybe even tomorrow, which will be today when this video goes up probably, um, I'll do a, a live stream or something where I go and try and build SSTOs with the new parts. Because that will be quite fun to do, and I'm sure there's a whole load of new stuff um, we can do with the, these parts. Anyway, now comes the time to bring it back down. And I did try and aim for the KSC here. So I decided, because obviously we do have that engine, that I'll come, if I'm, if I'm going to land, I'll land short rather than too far so that the engine is easier to use so I don't have to turn around or anything. Um, because when you're flying a craft that you've not flown before, it's kind of, and especially when you're in a weird orbit like I was, it can be difficult to judge, um, you know, where you're going to land. So I bring the periapsis down really low over the ocean, um, just past where we're going to land, but I do that from really far back in our orbit, I do that from nearly the other side of the orbit, that burn, so that means that by the time, because it's a really shallow descent, the atmosphere gets a lot of time to slow us down. And there we go. Um, now it's literally just a matter of gliding down and, uh, you know, not exploding in the fire and death of re-entry. Anyway, um, there are a couple of other things I'd like to mention. First of all, um, I know there was a bit of a break really before I made any videos, and I don't I don't know whether I really mentioned that in the last video, but that was because of a few things. Obviously, I've just started off at a new school. It's kind of been working out a sort of schedule. It's a bit weird at the moment because we're not in a permanent house or anything. Um, so you know, forgive me a bit, uh, or I'd, I'd like you to forgive me if you can. Um, for the kind of weird uploading schedule that will probably happen. However, there are some interesting developments. Maybe not all of you will like them. Some of you probably will, though. Um, interesting developments in the future, relatively near future, that might be happening. So keep an ear out for that. Stick around, and uh, yeah. Here we are, then. Um, I'll get back to the rest of the flight. So 13 kilometers up now, and we're pretty much through re-entry slowed down quite a lot as well. We came in at a couple of kilometers a second, so it is incredible how much speed you can bleed off with the atmosphere. And that's another pro tip. Really do, if you're going to other planets and things, or even coming back to Kerbin from other planets, if you're making a return, don't make a burn when you get there. Use the atmosphere. You could, there's, you know, whether you use a calculator or not to do it, it's so much more efficient to use the atmosphere to slow you down. 
But anyway, now it is literally just a matter of gliding down, and this does take a while. Now, I'm sorry it's in the dark, but um, I would like to say one of the other reasons why there's been a bit of a delay, which I did mention in the description of the last video, is that I've been learning to use the Adobe software, so that would be, for videos at least, um, the Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. Now, I have actually done some color correction on this video, so I've made it a little bit more vibrant and a little bit less contrasty, so there's less dark areas and less really bright areas, but then I've also upped the brightness slightly to make up for that. So, uh, because YouTube actually darkens videos in general, usually. And uh, at least making a couple of test videos in like Counter-Strike and things, just I uploaded them um, to see what the quality was like with the color corrections done. It actually looks a lot better, so I hope this looks a lot nicer than usual. It's also going to be in 1080p, so that should make a difference. But yeah, tell me what you think of the color correction, guys. Tell me if you think it's bright enough. This was actually pitch black, pretty much, on my screen. Uh, well, maybe not quite, but I, I could see but only because, um, you know, of the ambient light that there is in the game. Like, it can't get much darker than this. Um, so, you know, this is pretty much as dark as it gets on Kerbin. So, yeah, tell me what you think of that, guys. Um, that was done in After Effects, that colour correction, in case you're wondering. So I just literally added a bit of saturation, got rid of some contrast, and added a bit of brightness, and uh, that's the result. So if you know what that means then, and, you know, you want to make KSP videos, do that. It seems to have helped with other things at least. So anyway, we're coming in for the final approach now, and I actually used the engine a little bit here just to kind of get us going at a sort of fast enough speed that the uh, wings will generate enough lift and kind of get us, go make sure we're going really in the right direction. So I just give it a little bit of a kick and then cut the engine out again in a couple of seconds time. And then I uh, put the gear down, obviously and get ready to kind of flare up to land. So there we go, the engines are completely cut now. They were on low, but now they're completely cut. And uh, we missed the end of the runway a little bit, you know, land a little bit into the runway, but it's fine. Um, and yeah, the thing comes down fairly, fairly solidly, a bit of a wobble there from the chassis, but we're okay. And that was me just checking if I could steer with these things, um, the, that wheel. The steering is enabled on that wheel by default, which is a nice little touch. And anyway, come to a halt and uh, we're done. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, that's how I flew the Leostar A1, I believe it's called, the new StarCraft in Kerbal Space Program. So I hope you like the video, as always, and have a nice day.